On the line with me now, one of the more interesting guys, sometimes controversial guys I have ever talked to. His name is Gerald Salente. He's the publisher of the Trends Journal. The uh, Trends Journal is uh, published, what, quarterly, Gerald? Yes, it's a quarterly, Orv. And it's uh, sent all over the world from your home in Kingston, New York, your home office. Yes, Colonial Kingston, an hour and 45 minutes north of New York City. And we're right on the most historic corner in the United States, the only place where there is a pre-Revolutionary War stone building on each corner. There is. That's right. Wow. Are you in one of them? We have three of them, actually. Three of the four. <laughs> three of the four. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Trends Journal, you publish quarterly. You talk about things from all over the world. You write some of it. You're the publisher. You write some of it, and you have several journalists working with you and doing other other articles for the journal. That's correct, Orv. Now, um, I don't think I have talked to anyone who has expressed more disdain for the mass media than Gerald Salente. You're the guy. You mean because I call them prostitutes? <laughs> Amongst other things. Amongst other things. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, uh, there, there's no. Uh, it's, I call it CNN the Cartoon News Network. Uh, <laughs> there's, and it's, uh, there's nothing. I mean, people are disgusted. Look at the numbers. People are tuning out in droves. They are. They are indeed. But that's happening also in newspapers. Well, yes, it's happening in newspapers, but more so in the um, element of of the media in the sense that it's more convenient and it was always a quick way to get a quick bite of news but now it's just so boring and it's the same old things the same old tired faces oh ooh, ooh, they have they have newt gingrich now on cnn's crossfire wow oh. <laughs> haven't seen enough of newt gingrich for the rest of my life about eh, 20 years ago I'm going to you know. throw I'm going to throw some uh, short sentences or words to you and get your reaction. Okie doke. Here's the first one. Government shut down. Well, it's the uh, DC drama queens and the Beltway Circle jerks. It's more of the same and worse. Everything they touch they turn into into a losing situation whether it's running the government, starting and losing wars, bailing out too big to fails and overtaxing the people. It's what you expect from the incompetence and the ineps. Obamacare. <laughs> There's four words that killed capitalism. Too big to fail. In capitalism, there's no such thing. You rise and fall on your own merits. Obamacare. It's not socialized health medicine. It's forcing the people of the United States to buy health insurance from private giant insurance companies. It's called the merger of state and corporate powers in both, both instances. The merger of state and corporate powers is called fascism. And that's what we're moving toward. And as you look at the militarization of the American police and society, I see that's the trend. Obamacare, to me, is only going to make the big insurance companies richer, the big hospital chains richer, and give the American people less care and costing us more. Costing more? But, but yes, the word costi- up I'm front, sorry. Was gonna, the word up front is going to save you money. Well, yeah. Um, you know, I'm telling you that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. <laughs> Read my lips, no new taxes. <laughs> I mean, how many more do I have to go through? Here, here's the deal. You have a cap. They put a cap on it for a single person. Uh-huh. That's about $6,400. Yeah. Hey, what, what are people making these days, Orv? I mean, you're looking at uh, 95% of the jobs created in the last year are part-time jobs. So you're making twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year, yeah. and you've got to put out 6500 to cover your costs that, you, that weren't covered under Obamacare. A family of four. Oh, the average is about eh, median income fifty four thousand. Yeah, but you know what we're going to do? If you go over, it's going to cost you about twelve thousand five hundred out of your pocket. Oh, by the way, we're going to have all these different plans. And guess what? You're going to get lousy coverage. We're going to tell you who to go to, where to go to, and when to go. Now, this is an Obamacare is as I said, 
whether it's under Bush with the merger of state and corporate powers with bail too big to fail, or Obamacare forcing us to go to private companies for our health, it's called, according to Mussolini, the merger of state and corporate powers, fascism. Next word. Government surveillance. Look at the cover of the Trends Journal. Mm -hmm. The surveillance state. As I look at world religions today, and I was raised Catholic, and you can name any one of them, and I look at the politicians today, I can see how far they've all strayed from the roots. America today, and the president, whether it's Obama, Bush, Clinton, go up and down the list, other, the last great president to me, by the way, was Eisenhower, who I saw as a young boy. It's so far from the Constitution and the Founding Fathers, it's a disgrace what this nation has become. Surveillance state. Could you imagine they are watching us? Who are they? Why is this being allowed to happen? It goes back to a merger of state and corporate powers. It's called fascism. And the fascist, no, and the fascist element of this is, who's getting the money to watch us, Orv? Oh, how about, um, what's the name of that company out there, that uh, Booz Hamilton? Yeah, yeah, one of them, yeah. yeah. It's the military and cyber industrial complex. It's a takeover. What? It's a disgrace. What are those people say? What do they say in response to you? Do do they contact you? You know, no, they don't contact me. You you publish this this uh, journal and it goes all over the world, and you have subscribers all over the place to the Trends Journal, and and you're writing about these people, and you're on the air with me, and you're on the air with a whole bunch of people all over the country talking about them like that. They don't respond. No, as a matter of fact, a number of them subscribe. That's right. A number of government agencies that we're talking about yeah. subscribe to the Trends Journal. Uh, before we get away, how does one um, how does one subscribe to the Trends I, Journal? Just go to trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And by the way, we know because we live in the real world. Yeah. Where, you know, I wasn't like these other guys born on third base and thought I hit a triple. <laughs> we know that people are having a difficult time out there, so we have a discount request page and we try to make the trends journal available to everyone so that they can read history before it happens and prepare for the future gotcha history before it happens but you also do a tele you're on television aren't you um virtually well, every day well well part of the trends journal subscription is we do trends journal news mm -hmm. so we do the real news not the prostitute news how and we well. cover global issues. You know, I was just a, a, a subscriber just wrote in, for example, talked to me, you know, about, you know, I mentioned a, a, about, about a different country. And I said, you know, I said, you, 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 <laughs> you made a point of this one country and you're making it a big deal. On the trends in the news yesterday, I spoke about seven different countries. And so we really do cover the globe. So, for example, people don't really know what's going on in Greece. They're getting a one-sided take on this golden dawn. And they're mean, calling them neo-Nazis. The media is giving you one side of the story. Yeah, yeah, and they're giving you the side of the story being sold by the government. Yeah. Are they neo-Nazis? Yeah, possibly, but what's the, the, the uh, Greek government? Again, neo-fascist. A merger of state and corporate powers. And you see what they're doing and how they're doing it, and now they're dissenting any, any political group that they don't like. They're making it against the law. Um, what we, but the reason we write about this is not our interest in the Greek government, but really what's going on throughout Europe. Europe is two years, a year and a half away from exploding, whether it happens in Greece, in Spain, in Portugal, in Italy, or in France. Far too few have much too much, and way too many have much too little. And there was no Arab Spring. It was about poor people being disgusted about being poor and a few people taking all the dough, just like here in the United States. Go back. Bring it all together. The gap between the rich and the poor, the, the wealth divide right now, is as great as it has been since 1913. Wow. Now, my guest, by the way, is Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal. And I said up front that uh, Gerald Salente is a little bit on the controversial side. Now, Gerald, react to this, these words. One, two, three, four, five, six, six words here. 
lies, damn lies, and government lies. Read my lips, no new taxes. <laughs> I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I smoked, but I didn't inhale. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I say, yeah, I'm no crook. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, I, yeah, I don't know how people, when you look, Orv, in going back from today, Sunday, going back to the week, what a disgusting spectacle of people that call themselves our senators and congressmen. Who can have any respect for these people? And when you see, you know what it's like, it reminds me of, it reminds me of little girls and boys in sandboxes and throwing sand in each other's face. That's the level that they have stooped to. All these tough-talking people, and none of it's hurting them. Oh, you know the other one I get a kick out of? Tell me. When you look at the media this whole week, what do they talk about? The parks being closed down. Oh, yeah. oh the veterans going to the parks. And yeah, yeah. Do you know? Do you know what the, the you know what the budget for the the parks are? No. We have a, a, essentially a four trillion dollar budget. Yeah. They give we the people the grand total of a budget for all the federal parks, three billion dollars. Which is That's point zero percent, yeah. you know, yeah. of the federal budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next it, question. It, okay. Global economy. You saw what happened when they happened when they tried to taper. You saw all the emerging markets fall dramatically, the equity markets down eleven percent. Because all this cheap money that the Federal Reserve has been printing has been going into propping up the global economy. You get the money cheap here, you bring it over there and you make money on it. And when you saw them start talking about tapering the cheap money started drying up and the global economy started going down. With, if they, once they start tapering, the party's over. The only reason this economy is rebounding at any level at all is because of the record low interest rates. I mentioned to you we have four of the, three of the most historic buildings on the most historic four corners. Mm -hmm. One of them we bought in March of this year. We got an interest rate of 2.85% locked in for 15 years. Mm -hmm. What's keeping this going are the record low interest rates and, and flood of cheap money. Mm -hmm. When the cheap money pump dries up, and it's not only in the United States, it's China. China's dumping a ton of yuan into this system to keep it alive. Once the hot money dries, turns cold, the economy declines globally. Charles Salenti is my guest. Um, next, uh, let's see, global warming, pollution, water, those kinds of things. Well, you know, there's a real water crisis. You know, do I know about you know global warming? I'm not going to take a stand on it. I'm not a scientist. But here's the way I look at it, Orf. If you dump trillions of tons of poison and waste into the air, into the land, and into the water, it's going to have some kind of effect. Mm -hmm. And as I look at the waste of water... And I, as a trend forecaster, look at the numbers coming out. And we did a big story on tapped out, we called it, of the of the water crises that are emerging around the world. I can say with pretty much certainty that the water crisis is real, and that the pollution issues are terrible. Look at everybody. I just had a friend of mine, you know, 55 years old, dying of pancreatic cancer. And then I mention it and say, you know, I had a friend that died, just died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, I, and you keep hearing it. I mean, we cannot keep ingesting poisons and not it affecting our lives, which goes back to another trend. Two of them, whole health healing and clean foods. There is mm. going to be huge demand for untainted foods. By the way, as you well know, uh, was it Smithfield, United States' largest pork producer, was just bought out by a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. The reason they're buying them out, one of the reasons is, so then that they could start bringing their stuff over here. And we know how, I mean, if you think the food supply is tainted in the United States, hey, how about uh, some uh, rat for dinner, and we'll call it mutton. <laughs> how about tuning into the news, if you watch any of the news outside the United States, or read the news from outside the United States, yeah, what is it, 10,000 pigs? 
instead of poison floating down the Yangtze River, Yangtze River yeah. hey, maybe they'll be in your breakfast sausage <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> so what I'm saying is the market for clean foods food from farm to table is going to be one of the biggest trends that we can see developing for years to come. And another big one that we're going to be writing more about in the Trends Journal, yeah. fast food, health food. Yeah. Fast food, health food. That's right. Not, you know, McDonald's is going to put a couple of nice things on their menu, you know. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> it's more than that. Yeah, it's a lot um, more than that. The, uh, a few years ago, in your journal, you said that we, we being the American society, are tired of the grunge look. It's time for fashion to reemerge and for luxury. For We long for that. And, there, and it hasn't happened. It's starting to happen, but it hasn't happened. And the reason it hasn't happened, as I look at it, has a lot to do with the entertainment industry. Do you know that uh, Giuseppe Verdi produced his music, composed his music, I should say, for one reason and one reason only, his major passion? And that was to instill in the, the spirit within the, uni- within the Italian people, to ignite it to higher levels mm-hmm. of dignity and respect and courage so that they would overthrow the occupiers. Now, I mean, we're not going back a long time ago. We're going back to the 1800s. Yeah. And it worked. It was almost a bloodless revolution. Look at the music today. The music today is being produced by psychopaths, uh-huh. and they do it for the money. I, now, if you, if you ha- had me on your show, and you said, ladies and gentlemen, we have this gentleman from the record industry, and he's going to take us how, show us how we can make a lot of money and cares about nothing else other than making money. So, Mr. Salenti, what's your suggestion? Hey, oh, if I got a great idea. We're going to take the lowest common denominator of society, Ooh. the most vicious criminals in society, yeah. the ones that are in jail, that are in, we can't give them shoelaces or belts because they're so vicious they'll kill other inmates with them. And we're going to copy that fashion statement, and we're going to copy the way they talk. We're going to call it gangsta, Okay. We're going to make people look as stupid as they can possibly look with their pants falling down because they don't have any belts and their shoes without laces. And we're, going to, and we're going to make them talk and sing violent, disgusting, ignorant language like the lowest criminals in our society speak and talk and behave. And we're going to call it gangster. We're going to make, and we're going to call it rap, gangster rap. And why is Hollywood doing that? As I said, because you have sick people in charge. You have sick people in in Hollywood, just like you have sick people in D.C. And by the way, it's the same thing, because politics is show business for ugly people. (laughs) Great great analogy. I like that. Uh, Gerald, one more thing. In your trends journal, one of them recently, you said one of the trends in the world is war. Well, look what just happened. You saw uh, John Kerry go before all the the Senate and House committees trying to sell war. You saw President Obama trying to sell war. We just heard Prime Minister Netanyahu threatening again to that if he believed that uh, Iran was going to develop nuclear weapons, that that Israel would attack uh, Iran. We're looking at Syria in war. We're looking at the United States did a wonderful job, by the way, with that time limited, scope limited kinetic action in uh, in uh, Libya that mm-hmm. destabilized all of northern Africa, Mali, and continues to to breed more unrest. You have a you have a civil war going on in Egypt. You have one going on in Bahrain and Yemen. Look what I mentioned Greece earlier in this interview. Mm-hmm. It's a civil war going on over mm-hmm. there. The world is moving toward war. As the world economies decline, the last thing they do when all else fails, they take you to war. When people, and we're very concerned about war. When people have nothing else to lose, what is it you say? They lose it. That's right. That's your phrase. Yep. That's when people right. lose everything and have nothing else to lose, they lose it. Interesting. Gerald Salente, so nice to talk to you today. Very interesting. To, what, what a fascinating guy you are. And once again, to get that Trends Journal, we do what? 
TrendsJournal.com. TrendsJournal.com. Thank you so much, Orv. Gerald, nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.